All right. I have my 98 Chevy half ton here um, that I'm putting a Gen 6 big block in and I wanted to go over a few things that I had to do to make that work. Um, the first thing that is different that I'm going to talk about is the power steering. Um, I'm using the bracketry from the big block. Uh, the and the power steering pump alternator, all that. Um, the connections are different from the factory 305, uh, the, the factory connections for the water or, uh, oil lines. So um, you can't, you can see here the Gen 6 454 has two male fittings um, on the, the factory 305 stuff. Uh, has this hose here that connects to the power steering pump and then has a has a uh, female or sorry has a well has a female fitting on the power steering pump underneath there on the bottom side so this won't work as you can see it uh, connects to or the gen 6 454 power steering pump has these two uh, male fittings um, the second thing I'm going to talk about is if you want to use the ECM to control the fuel pump, you have to have the crankcase, uh, or sorry, crankshaft sensor hooked up, which is underneath here. Um, the 305 and the big block share the same connector so that's easy um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna how I'm gonna route it though that's kind of what you're left with <clears throat> um, after that we have uh, so this is what I did for my we got the fuel lines and the regulator and all that that you got to take care of um, so the the fuel lines coming out are the connector on those, the factory connector, is called a Saginaw. So you're, you're going to find this connected down by the firewall. Um, this is what goes into the uh, intake manifold for the, for the injectors. Um, see here, these fittings, these are the ones I'm talking about that are called... Uh, uh, Saginaw. They're also called metric. What I did is I I bought some Earl's connectors that are um, I think they're dash they're dash six to to uh, Saginaw. It's like a 14 millimeter and a 16 millimeter. It's pretty pretty easy to find on Summit. Um, so then what I did there is I ran one up to my regulator. Which I gotta trim this out or trim this off so I'll make it shorter. And I'll put a pressure gauge there. Um, so then I just ran over to to uh, this here. Okay, so I used a non bypass regulator. Um, <clears throat> ran a 3 8 line up to that. Ran over to my feed lines here to my carburetor. Um, I originally I had a bypass regular set up, set up here, but the return lines on this 305 on the factory setup uh, is a 5 16 and the supply is a 3 8 so that does not work. Um, it creates too much pressure. Uh, dir the directions on the Holly. Uh, for the Solly regulator, uh, they say make sure the return lines are the same as the supply lines. So, I found out though that this non-bypass regulator will work. So, what you can actually do is uh, you can just return. You can just hook this right up to the return, and that'll work. That'll take care of your pressure issues. You'll be able to regulate it down to six psi. So then the next thing I had to take care of 
is the <clears throat> throttle cable. Uh, so there's there is ways to take the factory throttle cable and um, put an end on it, shorten it, put an end on it. Um, what I did is I just I bought a throttle cable for a 91 Chevy one ton. Um, any, anything for the TBI should work, I'm assuming, but um, I use a 91 one ton uh, throttle cable. So I had to, what I had to do is I had to kind of manufacture a rig up a, <clears throat> a bracket there to use the factory 305 uh, throttle cable bracket. And I just attached it to the intake bolt, welded it, got the right uh, dimensions there so the there's no slack in there so the throttle cable works correctly. <clears throat> okay, so after that is uh, what I did for the distributor. Um, I don't know how well you can see this, but what you're going to do is find the connector for the coil, uh, attach the white wire to the green wire coming off the distributor, and then um, down in there I took the to feed the distributor, give it its hot wire. Um, I took the <clears throat> connector, well, that, you take the, you find the connector for the distributor, find the hot and hook that up. You can cut the connector off, splice into it, or you can do what I did, and I'll put a picture up of it. But I took a, uh, I took the end off the distributor, the factory distributor, cut that open, um, soldered on some wires to it and that way I can just hook up to the connector and then pigtail off that. So I'll, again I'll post a picture of that. Okay so one other thing to take into consideration to, depending on how you're doing it, uh, I'm using the, whole, the factory engine so uh, I am using the factory valve covers uh, on the Gen 6. Uh, I don't, I'm assuming it's the same on all of them. Uh, I used an engine from a 98, but uh, the valve covers from a 2000, um, they don't come with the oil fill. The oil fill is actually in the intake. So um, I had to get a valve cover from a junkyard that had the uh, oil fill in it. Um, I think it's a 98 454. This is actually a 2000 454. So another thing I need to mention, if you want to use the ECM to control the, the, in the, in the relay and everything, the factory relay, to control the ignition and the fuel pump, you need to make sure your neutral safety switch is hooked up. Um, so without that, you need to set up a relay of your own to control uh, the fuel pump and ignition, which is you know, it's pretty simple to do. Um, so then the other issue that you're going to come across is, you know, if you're using a 4L60 or a 4L80 uh, transmission, you're going to need to control it somehow. Um, what I am using is uh, this manual control box that allows you to use your shifter to shift your gears. So it, it's a manual control deal there. Um, you need to have uh, first, second, third, and drive to, to use this. Um, I think it's Jake's performance. I'll have to check and I'll put that up. Um, but anyways, yeah, this just plugs into the transmission and you wire it up per these instructions and uh, that, that takes care of that. So there's one more thing that I need to mention. Um, I haven't done it yet, but that comes down to if you want to use the factory coolant uh, gauge in the cluster. Um, and it's just hooking that up. 
I think it's different. I think the sensor on the big block is different than what's on the 305. I haven't looked at it completely yet, but at first glance, it's what it seems like. Um, anyways, so that's pretty much it, I think. It's kind of a quick rundown. I um, hope I described it in enough detail. Um, any questions or anything, ask. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Thanks a lot. Okay, so what I have here is the distributor off of the 2000 Chevy pickup truck with the Vortec uh, in it. Instead of cutting the wires that go to this to use with the uh, regular HEI distributor, I'm going to try and take this apart and see if I can get uh, use this connector and then uh, splice off that. So let's take it apart here and see what happens. Okay, so this is what uh, I ended up with. There's just uh, some wires molded into that plastic. Um, my next plan here is I'm going to solder some wires there to hook up to the lead coming out of the HEI distributor.